What's up YouTube, what's up world? This is Marky Mark back with another video. And as you can tell by the title of the video today, we'll be talking about 10 things you may or may not know about the US Virgin Islands. So we're gonna let that intro drop and be right back with you. All right, so I just wanna say to you guys, enough big ups. I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. At the bottom of my heart, the channel is steadily growing. More people are about, uh, finding out about the channel each month and so forth. So kudos to you guys. Thanks for your support and so forth. That's how it's going to be, man, on this channel right here. Make sure to keep it locked for a new video, new content coming to you each week right here on M. Blyden Vlogs. All right, so without any further ado, without any further ado, let's get into the 10 interesting facts about the Virgin Islands that you may or may not know. Okay, so the first thing we'd want to talk about uh, the Virgin Islands is the fact that it is an unincorporated territory of the United States of America. There are five major territories of the United States and the reason why I say major territories, there are other little known territories as well of the United States and those territories, however, are uninhabited but there are five major inhabited territories of the United States of which the U.S. Virgin Islands is considered to be unincorporated. Basically, what that means is we basically are like, honestly, stepchildren, <laughs> for lack of a better term. Um, they, we are not under the guides of the U.S. Constitution in certain parts of it, especially to the part, the main part that we cannot vote. We are, of course, U.S. citizens. Anyone born here in the U.S. Virgin Islands is U.S. is or becomes a U.S. citizen. However, we do not have the ability to vote in the elections for president. We do have an elected governor and elected senators who sit and they are or form the local governing body of the U.S. Virgin Islands. Now, in talking about like the citizenship there are certain territories however that even though they are a territory of the united states the residents of those particular or said territories are not citizens of the united states the virgin u.s virgin islands along with puerto rico which is our neighboring um, neighbor right next door you can see puerto rico from my house um, Puerto Rico basically and the U.S. Virgin Islands are granted U.S. citizenships. Okay, and that being said, the U.S. Virgin Islands is made up of three major islands, which is St. Thomas, which I live on, St. John, which is right next door, about a 10-minute ride on the ferry, um, and then St. Croix to the south of us, uh, which is actually the biggest island out of the three islands. The I'll, I'll mention this because people always ask. Um, it when you come to the Virgin Islands, it all depends on what you want to do. If you want some total re rest and relaxation, I'll suggest you go to St. John. St. John, over 75% of the island is reserved as a national park, and it's the more quiet island. If you want to get the party hardy life, you know what I mean, while you're on vacation, you come and stay on St. Thomas. And if you want a mixture of both, of course, you feel free to go to St. Croix. Uh, the two, there are only two out of the three major islands that have uh, an airport. So you could fly into either St. Croix or St. Thomas. To get to St. John, you'd have to fly into St. Thomas and catch a ferry to go over there. And you could either take up the ferry barge, get a car on there if you rent a car when you come down here, or take the passenger ferry uh, to get over to the island of St. John. Okay, the second thing I'd like to talk about in terms of coming to the Virgin Islands or knowledge about the Virgin Islands is the languages we speak here. The, of course, being a U.S. territory, the main language that we do speak here is English. So I speak English. And then the second language that is spoken here is Spanish. We are surrounded, as I just mentioned, Puerto Rico is right next door. We have a lot of Puerto Ricans living in the U.S. Virgin Islands as well. And we have family and so forth that live back and forth between the islands and so forth. So Puerto, uh, sorry, Spanish is the second most frequent language spoken, followed closely by French or Patois 
or as you would say, some would say Creole if you're from Haiti. So um, you would say Sac Passe, Nac Boulay, if you're from the Haiti and you speak in the Creole and so forth. Or if the people are, um, for example, from the island of Dominican, you would say they speak Patois. Um, they would say Sac All right. And that is, as I said, the close third language spoken right here in the U.S. Virgin Islands. So when you come down here, you will hear speak, people speaking with accents. And our accents are mainly based on those other two languages that I said follow up close second and third to the English language, which is more widely spoken here on the U.S. Virgin Islands. Okay, the third thing that I like to mention uh, about the U.S. Virgin Islands is the weather. Uh, we live right here where we see a lot of hurricanes coming in very frequently. Um, so that would play a role in the temperature in the Virgin Islands varies between 75 to 85 degrees on the daily. Every now and then we might get a cold front coming in and it drops below 75 degrees. It gets, but it's rarely during the time of year. Probably once a year, it'll drop to 60, 60 something, especially probably up in the hills if you're living up there above an elevation of about a thousand feet or so forth. It does tend to get kind of cool. Um, and then the the high would be 85, the norm, but sometimes on a hot, hot day, it'll go into get into the 90s as well and so forth. So if you're coming down here, that's the average temperatures you can look forward to experiencing while you stay in the U.S. Virgin Islands. And the, as I mentioned, the hurricane season starts in June and it ends in November. So if you don't wanna be a part of any of that, then don't come during those times. However, you can catch yourself a little good, a good deal on airfares coming down here to the Virgin Islands between those set dates, between the month of June and November, because that's when most people tend to go elsewhere and to encourage people to come, they do offer lower fares to come to the islands. Okay, the fourth thing I'd like to mention is actually the fact that we're the only place in the entire earth that you can actually drive on the left side but be in a U.S. territory. So St. Thomas is, I'm sorry, the U.S. Virgin Islands is the only U.S. Ter territory slash state that you can actually come to and expect to drive on the left. It's a lot on here. We drive on the left from the time the U.S. took over the territories of the islands in 1917. It has been that way and they have never thought to change it. So we're the only place in the entire world that you can actually be in the U.S., but you still is the only place that you drive on the left. So it takes a little bit of getting used to, and especially with the hills and the turns and so forth. Um, if it is something that you can do, do it because it will save you some money and having to spend for taxi, especially if you're coming with a big group. Okay, fifth up on the list. The Virgin Islands is home to some of the most beautiful beaches in the world. Two of them are right here in the Virgin Islands and one of them is on St. Thomas. That's world famous Megas Bay Beach. It has been rated top 10 beaches in the world by Trip Advisory. Also, we have Trunk Bay over on St. John. I'll also run the B-roll so you can see it as well. It's a beach that I've actually seen some people feature in their advertisements of their island or wherever they are. And I'm like, um, that is it. Why are they using that picture of Trunk Bay and saying that it's someplace else? But that beach, you may have seen it in commercials or ads as well. Uh, that beach is right here in the U.S. Virgin Islands over on the beautiful island of St. John. So, uh, the Virgin Islands, as mentioned, is very famous for the beaches itself also. And just to let you know, we are a U.S. territory. So if you are a U.S. citizen, you can come here just as you would if you're flying in between states, interstate, just by flying on your, your driver's license, your state issued driver's license or ID. You don't need, there's no passport required to fly down here and visit us right here in the U.S. Virgin Islands. All right, so following closely along to the last one, number six, the Virgin Islands, in particular St. Croix, is home to the Buck Island National Reef Mon Monument. It's basically an underwater trail, and it's one of the few trails like that that's a part of the U.S. National Parks. 
and uh, you would get to go see that Buck Island is a beautiful island. I have never been there myself, but I've seen it when, many times when I've been over in St. Croix. Hopefully on my next trip over to St. Croix, I could make it there myself because it features a beautiful beach. And on Sundays, the weekends, a lot of people go over there and they enjoy their time over there on the island of St. Croix. But the Buck Island is a beautiful, beautiful place to go and swim and enjoy yourself uh, when you do go over there. If you're staying on the island of St. Croix, do make it one of the stops. You may take a trip over there on one of the day sails if you so choose. All right, so seventh up on the list is the fact that the U.S. Virgin Islands is the only place in the world which celebrates not one, not two, but three carnivals. Yes, there are three times a year based on the fact that, as I mentioned, we have three major islands. Each of those three major islands actually have their own separate carnival. Beginning of the year, around New Year's time, that basically is going to be carnival time over on the island of St. Croix. Fast forward another three months to April, sometimes the first week of May, we have Carnival, which we just had, um, over right here on the island of St. Thomas. So that's last week of April, first week of May, usually falls around that time. That's the time when we have Carnival right here on the island of St. Thomas. And last but not least, in the month of July, so another, I guess you could say three months again, into time, you arrive at 4th of July, which yes, we do have fireworks, but the fireworks celebration basically ends off our time for carnival over on the island of St. John. So we have three reasons to party and fit right here in the U.S. Virgin Islands. So if you miss it one time, just know in the next three months, you have a chance to catch it again. If you miss it once again in April, May, Fast forward another three months, you have another chance to catch up on your carnival in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Come and party hardy over on the island of St. John. So, three reasons to fit right here in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Okay, number eight up on the list. Um, actually going to be talking about currency. Of course, we use the U.S. currency right here in the U.S. Virgin Islands. However, there have been a couple minted coins and actually printed dollars, monetary units, uh, that do have a print, including the Virgin Islands. So, hold on a second, let me see if I can adjust this right here. The sun is starting to be... Okay, I'll put it back there. Okay, so, basically, when it comes to the monetary units, there have been, I think, three times in history where we have had coins minted by the U.S. Mint, um, and also there's a dollar bill in print. So I believe it was in 2019, there is a quarter that was printed along with the same time when other states, there was a quarter printed for a quarter dollar printed for all the states and territories in the United States that are part of the United States. And this is the coin, I'll put it right up here, that was minted for the US Virgin Islands. And also, a little later on in 2020 or 2022, I believe there was another coin that was minted in excuse me in commemoration of the. There's a park over there on the island of Salt Park, a Salt Pond over on the island of Saint Croix that a special coin was minted for. Also, let me mention the coins that the quarters that were minted for in commemoration of the territory also do come in gold 24 karat gold so you could actually order one of the 24 karat gold coins also if you like i'll put a link in the description down below where you can get that coin as well that also brings me up to the next topic which will be there was a dollar that was printed for no actually a two dollar bill that was printed for all states and territories and there is a commemorative dollar bill that was printed or two dollar bill that was printed for the u.s virgin islands i'll also put the link in the description down below where you can purchase and it is legal tender all these 
monetary units are legal tender and for use but of course you would want to use it as a collector or so forth just have it on display in your living room or wherever and i'll put the link in the description down below where you can get that as well okay number nine on the list alexander hamilton alexander hamilton was one of the founding fathers of the united states he was born on the neighboring island of nevis and he grew up, he spent most of his formative years growing up on the island of St. Croix. So a lot of people may not know that. You may have heard the name in U.S. history class and so forth, but may not know that he has ties or roots in the U.S. Virgin Islands also. So um, that is a little bit of a history class that will fall as number nine on the video today. And last but not least... And this one falls near and dear to my heart because I'm also in the filmmaking business down here. The Virgin Islands has been chosen as the location for the filming of a lot of movies. It's like over 50 movies probably have been filmed down here in the Virgin Islands. Uh, there was one, I think one of the episodes of Twilight Saga was actually filmed over on Megan's Bay Beach. And there's a section because there's a part where they, they're supposedly in a pool up in wherever the area they were at. And they filmed the scene with the guy coming up out of the water one night down on Megan's Bay Beach. Uh, one of the more popular movies that you may or may not have watched is Weekend at Bernie's 2, which was filmed right down there in the heart of Charlotte and Mali at the fort. They were using the police station, the fort as like the police station, the makeshift police station for the movie. So you may or may not have noticed that in the movie. You can, if you get a chance, go ahead and even rent it tonight and check it out. Because that was one of my fun, the fun movies watching growing up and so forth. I even got to see some of the filming when it was going on for that movie right down here in the U.S. Virgin Isles. Also, one thing I'm hoping to do is get together with a bunch of other filmmakers living right here in the U.S. Virgin Islands. So we could set up like a, a nice little company basically, which will offer our services to anyone coming down here looking to make a feature film or whatever have you where because it's a lot of money to put camera gear and lighting equipment all that stuff on a plane and ship it down here so basically what they could do is just contact us and let us to know have that equipment and so forth and even cameramen on the ready and just submit the digital formats to them when they're done shooting the film even if you want to do a music video or whatever you can heal up your boy reach out to your boy and I'll be more than happy to get a little team together to do a little music video or whatever have you right down here in the U.S. Virgin Islands. So that's the end of my spiel. I was hoping to keep it down to a, like a 20 minute video, which I did come in and get under. So um, that's the end of my spiel. I hope you guys enjoy those 10 things that you may not have known before, but now you know. All right. So thanks for watching the video. That's a, this has been another episode of M Blyden Vlogs right here on YouTube. Stay tuned, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't subscribed as yet. Make sure to click that notification bell so you can be notified of any new videos whenever they drop right here on the channel, all right? Love you guys and I would love to say, make sure to leave your mark on the world. This is Marky Mark signing out, saying see you next time and VI to the world, world, world.